And of course, we have with us one of the power brokers in college football, especially within HBCU football. He is the executive director of the Celebration Bowl. John Grant, welcome to the pregame show. Man, I am so delighted to be here with, you know, these superstars tonight. Uh, you, you guys really make me feel special with this invitation. So thank you for having me. Well, we appreciate you being here. You know, John, uh, we're at this real inflection point uh, where a lot of eyes are on uh, HBCU football, taking a look at the Southwestern Athletic Conference, taking a look at the MEAC. Uh, but from your vantage point, uh, this has to be a phenomenal time to to really be watching HBCU football right now. You know, if I were to say, um, and I, I'm, I'm somewhat of a historian, but I would say that this is probably the greatest time ever in the history of um, HBCU football and athletics. And I say that from the vantage point of we have never had um, – uh, as much visibility on our programs um, as we as we have today. You know, an example that I will give, I'll only I'll talk from the ESPN perspective. In 20, 2015, we were televising um, thirty five games. This year, we broadcast over one hundred and fifty five from wow. the ESPN platform. That doesn't count what you know the additional programming um, agreements that the SWAC has with HBCU Go and other programs, as well as what the MEAC has with Flow Sports and, and, and others. So the, 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 the exposure and the access to um, our programming now and HBCU athletics has never, and I will say that never, been at this level. It, 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 it literally is changing the game. Wow. John, let me uh, uh, throw some stuff your way before I before I hit you with something. Uh, one, I want to, you know, again, thank you for coming on the program tonight, but also just uh, thank you as an HBCU alum, as as a, a supporter in this space for the work you do with the Celebration Bowl uh, with ESPN. You know, having a person in the room, a person of your caliber, is a first class event, uh, and 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 we're not looking ahead to the Celebration Bowl. You know, we we have a game this weekend. You mm -hmm. always invite the champions, the MEAC champion and the SWAC champion. But it was timely to have you on because you know things get, get busy after this week as you gear up for that event in Atlanta. What does it mean for you in the Celebration Bowl for folks to understand that you may have two teams from the SWAC and the MEAC, but this is just a cultural event and that everyone should be coming to celebrate in Atlanta the champions from these two historically black conferences? Um, and that is a great question, Neil, and it's, it's an appropriate one. Um, I would define it this way. Just think Super Bowl. We have a Super Bowl, our Super Bowl, and that's literally what it is. And when I approach people, I'll ask them this question. If I were to walk up to you and, and say to you, I have two tickets to the NFL Super Bowl, will you ask me who's playing? Or will you just accept them? A hundred percent of the time, they'd be absolutely I would accept them. Well, if you will do it for that, then you should do it for this. Um, because in this case, we have the opportunity to, as we are together, building a platform second to none. And I will say that across all the boat, I'm, I'm, I you know, have the great pleasure of working with some wonderful people who run some outstanding games. Um, Neely, I, I, when, when you have, I have the person who runs the Rose Bowl sitting next to me at a, at a bowl meeting and he looks at me and, and leans over and says, John, you know, you guys are overachieving. We mm -hmm. never anticipated that the Celebration Bowl would be what it has become. Mm -hmm. and, and to have a response, you know, I, I smiled and I said, look, thank you for the compliment. But imagine where we'll be when we're 103 years old. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. We're only seven. Yeah. We're yeah. a baby in this space. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity and seeing it from this vantage point, all of us, and, and starting with you guys, um, what you do with your program is, is absolutely phenomenal and it's needed. We have to have program, um, you know, people like you and others that are carrying the water in this space to help get us to where you just outlined uh, as a place we need to be. Well, John, let me tell you this. There's two things going to get done on the pregame show between me, me and Chuck. 
One of us gonna carry water and somebody gonna chop wood. We we're gonna put we gonna we gonna do our part. Now, you <laughs> got two part. you got two jobs at the fort. Somebody got to chop wood. Somebody got to carry water. Let me let me follow up on something because you talked about literally the infancy of the celebration bowl, particularly compared to the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, at hundred plus years. Sometimes our fans out there, when their team doesn't make it, they talk about how well the celebration format should be changed. It should be the best two teams in HBCU land, no matter what conference they're from, even if from the same conference. How open to you as executive director, or do you see any changes coming on the horizon, or is this blueprint the model you want to stick with for some time to come? Look, um, when teams don't make it to the Super Bowl, I don't hear anyone talking about <laughs> when you need to change it. <laughs> People want to see the champions. Yeah. Um, Fortunately, the you know the way that the Celebration Bowl is legislated now with the NCAA um, is that you we have the champion from the MEAC versus the champion from the SWAC. That's the way it's, it's, it is on the books. When you have a national championship game, you have the people who, who, who have the absolute best records. This is not number one against number two. It's one against one. Mm -hmm. Now, would there be the opportunity to create formats down the road sometime in the future? Again, that has to be legislated because you're getting into postseason play. And, mm -hmm. and that requires legislation from the NCAA to um, allow, you know, maybe a, a, a playoff process. I think that there may be some validity to, to that. But today, and we live in today, um, right now, the goal is from, from every coach in those two conferences is to get to Atlanta. And for those HBCUs that chose to go somewhere else, my hat's off to them. Play where you are. Um, but if you want to compete, um, then the two conferences are the MEAC and the SWAC. Join us. Uh, John, let me tell you this. I'm taking shades off. I asked that question for the FAMU fans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, FAMU, you heard it from the commissar himself. You want to go to Atlanta, we're in the sweat. That's what it takes. Uh. <laughs>